ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम साई रम मुश्तबा एंड विस मी इज सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी कॉल्स फॉर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ हाई पावर पुलिस टेक्नोलॉजी मिशन फॉर ग्रास रूट पुलिसिंग होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह टू ले फाउंडेशन स्टोन ऑफ रानी गादिन ल्यू ट्राइबल फ्रीडम फाइटर्स म्यूजियम एट लॉन्खाव विलेज इन तमांग लॉन्ग डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ मणिपुर टूडे सेंट्रल टीम टू स्टार्ट विजिटिंग फ्लड अफेक्टेड एरियाज ऑफ तमिलनाडु टू असेस डैमेजेस फ्रॉम टूडे स्कूल्स इन डेली टू रिमेन क्लोज टिल फर्दर ऑर्डर्स ड्यू टू एयर पोल्यूशन मोर देन एट पॉइंट फोर क्रो अनऑर्गेनाइज वर्कर्स रजिस्टर एट ई श्रॉम पोर्टल टिल नाउ फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स पंप इन नाइनटीन थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व क्रो रुपीज इन इंडियन मार्केट्स इन नवंबर सो फार सिंगापोर एंड इंडिया रीच एग्रीमेंट ऑन रिजम्पन ऑफ पैसेंजर फ्लाइट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी India beat New Zealand by 73 runs in third and final T20 in Kolkata and in tennis Germany's Alexander Zverev clinches his second ATP final title beating Daniel Medvedev of Russia As India created history by administering over 100 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19 All India Radio salutes all doctors nurses frontline workers and all those who got vaccinated and made this possible even though the country has achieved this feat we caution our listeners that the battle against covid is not yet over we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated please follow these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene for any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 0112397 and 1075 as our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence a series of events is being organized by the government as part of azadi ka amrit mahotsav to commemorate the occasion as a jan utsav all india radio news brings its listeners a special quiz on india's freedom movement and its glorious history The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News since 16th of August and will continue till 15th August 2022. India Post has joined hands as the logistics partner with All India Radio News for the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. And coming to our 29th question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz in English. In which year was the first session of the All India States People's Conference convened? I repeat the question. In which year was the first session of the All India States People's Conference convened? Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 8826546262. That is 8826 5462 or through email on amrit mahotsav quiz at prasarbharti.gov.in amrit mahotsav quiz at prasarbharti.gov.in and now the news in detail prime minister narendra modi yesterday called for adoption of future technologies for grassroots policing requirements and development of interoperable technologies which would benefit police forces across the country The Prime Minister was addressing the valedictory session of the 56th Conference of Director Generals of Police (DGPs) and Inspector Generals of Police (IGPs) yesterday. He attended all the sessions of the conference. The conference was attended by 62 DGPs and IGPs of states and union territories and heads of Central Armed Police Forces and Central Police Organizations in Lucknow. More than 400 officers of various ranks attended the conference virtually from IB offices across the country. Addressing the valedictory session of the conference yesterday, the Prime Minister called for analysis of all police-related incidents and developing case studies to make it an institutionalized learning mechanism. The Prime Minister participated in the discussions and gave valuable suggestions during the conference. 
In the run-up to the conference, various core groups of DGPs were formed for holding discussions on key aspects of national security, such as prison reforms, terrorism, left-wing extremism, cyber crimes, narcotics trafficking, foreign funding of NGOs, drone-related matters, and development of border villages. Prime Minister Modi called for constituting a high-power police technology mission under the leadership of Union Home Minister to adopt future technologies for grassroots policing requirements. Citing the importance of technology in the lives of general public, the Prime Minister gave examples of COVIN, GEM and UPI. Home Minister Amit Shah will lay the foundation stone for setting up of Rani Gaidinlu Tribal Freedom Fighters Museum at Longkau Village in Manipur's Tamanglong district via video conferencing today. The project has been sanctioned by the Union Ministry of Tribal Affairs at an estimated cost of 15 crore rupees. The state cabinet had decided to set up the museum at Longkau village in Tamanglong district, which is the birthplace of renowned freedom fighter Rani Gaidin Liu, and decided to name the museum as Rani Gaidin Liu Tribal Freedom Fighters Museum. The Ministry of Tribal Affairs is celebrating its Azadi Kamrit Mahotsa week beginning on 15th November, which was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi as Janjatya Gaurav Divas. A central team will visit the monsoon hit districts in Tamil Nadu today to assess the damages and suggest recommendations to the Union Government. The delegation, led by Joint Secretary Rajiv Sharma, will visit the north and south districts of the state for three days and leave for Delhi on 24th. The team was briefed on the whole scenario on the damages and the preemptive action taken at the onset of the monsoon. More details from our correspondent. All the responsible district characters, MPs and MLAs of the rain hit districts have been asked by Chief Minister M.K. Stalin to guide the delegation. Earlier, a team of six ministers had inspected crop damages after which the state government has appealed to the centre to provide a sum of Rs. 2,629 crore as relief. The Chief Minister issued orders to provide Rs. 20,000 per hectare for fully damaged crops in the Delta region earlier. Agricultural input subsidy of Rs. 6,038 has been ordered for every hectare of submerged samba crop to help the farmers to take up cultivation again. The state is also facing unprecedented floods due to rains in the catchment areas of neighboring Andhra and Karnataka, which has still caused flooding in many districts. Joy, AI News, Chennai. Schools in National Capital Delhi will remain closed for physical classes till further orders in view of the prevailing air quality situation. Delhi Government's Directorate of Education in a circular said, the Environment Department has directed to close all schools with immediate effect till further orders of the Commission for Air Quality Management in National Capital Region and adjoining areas, and therefore all government and private schools will remain closed till further orders. It said online teaching, learning activities and exams for board classes would be conducted as per guidelines issued earlier. The Delhi government on the 13th of this month had announced closure of schools and other educational institutions in view of the deteriorating air quality in Delhi. More than 8.4 crore unorganized workers have registered at the eShram portal till now. The number of unorganized sector workers registration at the portal has been rising steadily over the 12 weeks since its launch. Workers in the age group of 18 to 40 have the highest share followed by those in the age group of 40 to 50. The youth success in registration is due to unified command and control and regular directions and meticulous monitoring by Labour and Employment Minister Bhupendra Yadav. BJP President J.P. Nadda will be on a two-day visit of Uttar Pradesh beginning today. He will attend a number of organizational meetings, including of the party's booth heads from Gorakhpur and Kanpur. Bharatiya Janata Party Chief Spokesperson Anil Baluni said, Mr. Nadda will start his program by offering puja at the Goraknath Temple and then attend a number of party programs before reaching Lucknow at night where he will chair key meetings. Mr. Nadda will be visiting Kanpur tomorrow. In Rajasthan, 15 ministers took oath in the first cabinet reshuffle of the Ashok Gehlot government yesterday. Governor Kalraj Mishra administered oath of office and secrecy to 11 MLAs as cabinet ministers and 4 MLAs as minister of state in a ceremony held at Raj Bhavan yesterday. There are six new faces among those who took oath as cabinet ministers including Hema Ram Chaudhary, Mahinder Jeet Singh Malviya, Ram Lal Jat, Mahesh Joshi, Govind Ram Meghwal and Shakuntala Rawat. 
Vishwendr Singh and Ramesh Meena who were sacked last year for adopting a rebel attitude towards the government have again been sworn in as cabinet ministers. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan inaugurated the State of the Art Center for Nanotechnology and Center for Indian Knowledge System at IIT Guwahati yesterday. He also released a book on implementation of National Education Policy 2020. Assam Education Minister Ranoj Pegu was present on the occasion. Mr Pradhan exhorted IIT Guwahati to leverage innovation and biodiversity based research for making North East a hub of green energy development. Over 116 crore 50 lakh covid-19 vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Over 10,000 new covid-19 cases were reported in the last 24 hours while over 12,000 people recovered. The Union Health Ministry said covid recovery rate in the country now stands at 98.3%, which is the highest since March last year. In our bilingual live phone in program Corona Jagrukta series Dr. Tanuja Nesari, Director, All India Institute of Ayurveda, New Delhi, will be with us today to answer the queries related to coronavirus. Listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9:30 p.m. on toll-free number 18001115767. I repeat, 18001115767, and on telephone number 0112331444. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert by hashtag Ask AIR. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls for constitution of high power police technology mission for grassroots policing. Home Minister Amit Shah to lay foundation stone of Rani Gaidanlu Tribal Freedom Fighters Museum at Longkau Village in Tamanglong District of Manipur today. Central team to start visiting flood affected areas of Tamil Nadu to assess damages from today. Schools in Delhi to remain closed till further orders due to air pollution. More than 8.4 crore unorganized workers register at e-shram portal till now. Foreign portfolio investors pump in 19,712 crore rupees in the Indian markets in November so far. Singapore and India reach agreement on resumption of passenger flights from 29th of this month. India beat New Zealand by 73 runs in third and final T20 in Kolkata and in tennis Germany's Alexander Zverev clinches his second ATP finals title beating Daniel Medvedev of Russia. For quick news updates round the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Foreign portfolio investors FPIs have pumped in 19712 crore rupees so far in Indian markets this month. As for the depositories data, they invested 14,051 crore rupees into equities and 5,661 crore rupees in debt segment between 1st and 18th of November. This translated into total net investment of 19,712 crore rupees during the period. Experts say that despite intermittent and short-term challenges, India offers a good growth opportunity for investors. Singapore and India have reached an agreement on resumption of scheduled commercial passenger flights between the two countries. Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore (CAAS) said that Singapore's vaccinated travel lane or VTL with India will start on 29th of November with six designated flights daily from Chennai, Delhi and Mumbai. Applications for vaccinated travel pass or VTP for short-term visitors and long-term pass holders from India will start today. Airlines can also operate non-VTL flights between India and Singapore. All the passengers on non-VTL flights will be subject to the prevailing public health requirements, CAAS said. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will be on a two-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir beginning today. This will be her first visit to JNK as Finance Minister after the abrogation of Article 370. More details from our Srinagar correspondent. The Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on the first day of her visit to Jammu and Kashmir today is scheduled to inaugurate Aikar Bhavan Kam Residential Complex at Rajbagh in Srinagar. She will also interact with women entrepreneurs of Jammu and Kashmir and officials of Central Board of Direct Taxes (CBDT) and Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs (CBIC). The Union Finance Minister later in the day will also launch externally aided projects (EAP) and program on Mission Youth at Sherry Kashmir International Convention Center (SKICC) in the outskirts of. 
Srinagar city. Tomorrow, the Union Ministry will also visit Jomu and take part in a credit outreach and financial inclusion program there. This is Sunil Kohl for AIR News from Srinagar. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember the incredible warrior and freedom fighter Jhalkari Bai who was born on the 22nd of November 1830. An advisor and confidant to the legendary Rani Lakshmi Bai, she played a key role in the battle formations alongside Lakshmi Bai and emerged as a prominent fighter during the first war of Indian independence in 1857. Jhalkari was born to Sadoba Singh and Jamuna Devi in Bhojila village near Jhansi. Jalkari didn't go to school for a formal education but was taught to wield weapons skillfully and given horseback riding lessons since her childhood. Tales of her bravery were famous in Jhansi's households. It is said that once when decoits tried to raid the village, Jalkari single-handedly drove them away. She is also said to have killed a tiger with her axe when the animal tried to attack her in the jungle. Rani Lakshmi Bai spotted Chalkari during a festival celebration in Chasi Fort and was surprised by the uncanny resemblance Jalkari shared with her. When the Queen was briefed on Chalkari's brave acts, she was quickly inducted into the women's wing of the army. In 1858, when British Field Marshal Hugh Henry Rose attacked Chasi, Rani Lakshmi Bai took on the British forces from her fort with just an army of 4,000. However, she was betrayed by one of her own commanders, thus making defeat imminent. Counseled by her generals, Lakshmi Bai quietly slipped away from Jhansi on horseback. Jalkari Bai set out for General Rose's camp in disguise and declared herself to be the queen. This led to a confusion that continued for a whole day and gave Lakshmi Bai enough time to escape. Jalkari Bai died on 4th April 1858 while defending her queen and fighting for her motherland. Her courage has left behind a rich legacy for millions to emulate. There is a statue in her honor in Gwalia. In 2001, the government of India released a stamp to pay tributes to Jhalkari Bai, a warrior who lived and died defending her people and her country. We salute her indomitable spirit. <laughs> Today, we also commemorate the birth anniversary of Indian nationalist Shanti Ghosh, who was born on 22nd of November 1916 in Kolkata, West Bengal. Ghosh was a founder member of the Chhatri Sangha in Kamila and joined the militant revolutionary organization Jugantar Party. On the 14th of December 1931, Ghosh and Suniti Chaudhary, both 16 years old at that time, walked into the office of Charles Jeffrey Buckland Stevens, the district magistrate of Kamila, under the pretense that they wanted to present candies and chocolates to the magistrate prior to Christmas. While Stevens ate the candy and said, These are delicious! Ghosh and Chaudhary removed automatic pistols, which were hidden under their shawls and said, Well, how about this one, Mr. Magistrate? And shot him. The two girls were sentenced to transportation for life and sent to Hijli detention camp, Kharagpur. However, in 1939, after having served seven years of sentence, they were released 
because of the amnesty negotiations between Mahatma Gandhi and the British government. After her release, Ghosh attended the Bengali Women's College and joined politics. She served on the West Bengal Legislative Council from 1952 to 62 and 1967 to 68 and on the West Bengal Legislative Assembly from 1962 to 64. She continued to work for the betterment of India till her death in 1989. We salute the great Indian patriot. <laughs> brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Azadi ki Pachatari Varsh Gant Par Desh Amrit Mahut Sammana Raha Hai Isme Rangoli Pratiyogita Ho Rahi Hai Kya Aap Bhi Isme Bhaag Lena Chahate Hai Yadi Haan To Registration Ke Liye Amrit Mahut Sab Dot NIC Dot In Par Jain Aise Rang Bharo Bharat Ka Har Sapna Rangin Bana Do आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार In today's episode of धरोहर we will bring you the speech of veteran freedom fighter Raja Rashi Purushottam Das Tandan. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Best wishes to all our consumers for Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmarked gold jewelry. For any consumer related complaints, Contact National Consumer Helplines toll-free number 14404. Issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahak Jago. In some more news, INS Vishakapatnam has been formally commissioned into the Indian Navy in the presence of Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh at the Naval Dockyard in Mumbai. INS Vishakapatnam is a P-15B stealth-guided missile destroyer indigenously designed by the Indian Navy. A report. Speaking on the occasion, the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said Indian Navy's role is very important as India is a part of the Indo-Pacific route. He said Prime Minister Narendra Modi's policy of Sagar embodies the values that open up every opportunity to build India into an indigenous shipbuilding hub. The Minister also appreciated the self-reliance efforts of the Indian Navy. He said the Navy's order of 39 of the 41 ships and submarines from Indian shipyards is a testament to their commitment towards achieving Atmanirbhar Bharat. Devopri Bhattacharji, AIR News, Mumbai. The first day of the 52nd edition of IFE saw an array of events to attract cinephiles from across the country. Russian movie Dia Deli Murtels, directed by Viktor Rizakov, was showcased in the inaugural session of the BRICS Film Festival, which is being held simultaneously. The Indian Panorama section was officially launched yesterday. A special screening of the Hindi film Dhamaka was organized, including an introduction by actor Karthikaryan. मैं बहुत खुश हूं यहां पे आकर और ये मेरा पहली बार ऐसा हो रहा है कि मेरी फिल्म खुद शोकेस हो रही है स्क्रीन हो रही है यहां पे धमाका तो इससे पहले मैं फैन की तरह यहां पे बहुत बार आया हूं दूसरी फिल्म में देखने के लिए पहली बार मैं अपनी फिल्म यहां पे लेकर आया हूं एंड आई एम सो ग्लैड कि इसी ने हमारी फिल्म को शोकेस करने का डिसीजन लिया और बहुत ऑनर है पूरी टीम के लिए क्योंकि ये बहुत बड़ी बात है कि धमाका यहां पे शोकेस की जा रही है ये बहुत अच्छी पहल है बिकॉज़ ये काफी ये सवाल आता है कि ओटीटी या थिएटर और मैं हमेशा से ये जवाब
India thrashed New Zealand by 73 runs in the third and final T20 international at the Eden Gardens in Kolkata last night. With this win, India pulled off a clean sweep over the Kiwis in the three-match series 3-0 and now both teams will square off in two-match test series beginning Thursday in Kanpur. In tennis, Alexander Zverev captured his second NATO ATP finals last night overcoming world number two Daniel Medvedev 6464 to end his standout 2021 season in style at Turin in Italy. The German defeated world number 1 Novak Djokovic in the semi-finals and backed that up against Medvedev in an impressive performance. 34th All India Postal Wrestling Championship will begin today in New Delhi. Tokyo Olympic bronze medalist wrestler Bajrang Punia and Indian Olympic coach Anil Mann will grace the opening ceremony as chief guest. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. Srinagar will have a mid clear sky. Temperature will hover between minus 2 and 13 degrees Celsius. Jammu will also have a mid clear sky. Temperature will hover between 9 and 25 degrees Celsius. Leh is likely to witness a mid clear sky. Gilgit will have a mid clear sky as well. Delhi will have mist. Temperature will hover between 12 and 26 degrees Celsius. While Mumbai will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Papers have noticed different stories today in the press. Delhi schools to remain shut for now. Ban extended on entry of trucks, writes the Hindustan Times. The pioneer headlines, five of pilots men in new Gelod government, 12 new faces in the 15 member cabinet. House panel to adopt report on data protection bill today writes the Hindu business line while the same paper also notes an important story PNB server vulnerability may have exposed data of over 180 million customers says cyber security firm Cyber X9 and finally ready to splurge in the Black Friday Cyber Monday sale the Financial Express notes 70000 Indian exporters gear up for Black Friday Cyber Monday sale through Amazon Before we end the bulletin a reminder of today's question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz In which year was the first session of the All India States People's Conference convened I repeat in which year was the first session of the All India States People's Conference convened WhatsApp your response on 8826546262 that is 8826546262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at prasarbharti.gov.in Amrit Mahotsav quiz at prasarbharti.gov.in And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Modi calls for constitution of high power police technology mission for grassroots policing Home Minister Amit Shah to lay foundation stone of Rani Gaidin Liu Tribal Freedom Fighters Museum at Long Kao village in Tamanglong district of Manipur today Central team to start visiting flood affected areas of Tamil Nadu to assess damages from today Schools in Delhi to remain closed till further orders due to air pollution. More than 8.4 crore unorganized workers register at Ishram portal till now. Foreign portfolio investors pump in 19,712 crore rupees in Indian markets in November so far. Singapore and India reach agreement on resumption of passenger flights from 29th of this month. India beat New Zealand by 73 runs in third and final T20 in Kolkata. And in tennis, Germany's Alexander Zverev clinches his second ATP Finals title, beating Daniel Medvedev of Russia. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day.